Hello, I'm Jackie Lockie, your financial planning maestro. This series of podcasts is aimed at financial planning professionals and also those who are looking to enter the financial planning profession. We will be talking during the podcast about all things Certified Financial Planner certification related, talking to other CFPs around the world, And also, we will be dropping in on some new entrants who've just entered the financial planning profession, and we'll be checking up along the way on a regular basis with them to see how they're getting on. I hope you enjoy today's podcast. Hello, I'm Jackie Lockie, your financial planning maestro. And in today's podcast, we are talking to the chief exec of the Financial Planning Standards Board in Denver, USA, and that is Dante Dottori. And in today's session, which I recorded earlier in the year, we are talking about the changes that are, have taken place now to the International Certified Financial Planner Competency Profile. So let's just talk for a moment about what that is. So Many of you CFP professionals out there who are listening will know that the Financial Planning Standards Board, the FPSB, is the global standard setting body for financial planning standards outside the US. And Dante came in 12, just about 12 months ago now as the new chief exec after the longstanding previous chief exec, Noel May, retired And as part of the ongoing work over the last few years, globally, the 27 CFP affiliate organizations around the world have been participating in some research to establish what the future of financial planning looks like, both from a practitioner point of view and an employer-led point of view, and also, perhaps most importantly, a consumer demand point of view. And when we overlay that with changes that are happening around the world with more focus on uh, client vulnerability and other investments that are coming to the forefront now that, uh, you know, unregulated investments like cryptocurrency, um, we can see and we've heard from IOSCO, which is the uh, international uh, securities regulator, their chief exec is on record as saying over the past couple of years, that, you know, the rise in scams um, and also the lack of understanding over regulated products and unregulated products, um, how clients are can be missold products, uh, and also these new emerging uh, unreg- unregulated investments are coming to the fore. And it's one of the major concerns of regulators around the world. So with that in mind, it's perhaps no surprise that if you look at the International Certified Financial Competency Profile, which is essentially a document that sets out knowledge and behavior requirements to become a certified financial planner professional in any of the territories around the world, then that document had a an emission in it, which uh, it which was essentially looking at the psychology of money, the kind of behavioural finance aspects of money, and not only how clients behave, but also we as financial planners behave, looking at our own biases as well as our natural client biases when we talk to them. And in my discussion with Dante, we talk quite a lot about uh, how that overlaps with client vulnerability. And we know that if you're a regulated financial advisor in the UK at the moment, that, you know, over the last, gosh, more than five years now, the the FCA has been talking about client vulnerability and, you know, shining a spotlight and focusing in on that as a particular area. There are great organisations in the UK and others around the world who are doing excellent work in educating the CPD in the area of client vulnerability. But the aim of the new standards that came in on the 1st of April 2023 that were included in the CFP uh, professional competency profile They include all of those things, including the vulnerability, including behavioural finance, including biases and consumer behaviour. And but also it's not just a case of, you know, learning it and forgetting it. It's actually 
for the affiliate countries now to discuss and agree how each of those countries are going to uh, integrate the new assessment criteria, the new standards into their own individual localised assessment criteria. Because it's not just a case of, oh, well, I'll, you know, I'll read a book about behavioural finance, for example, um, or I'll learn about the different types of biases out there. As Dante ex- ex- will explain to you in a minute, it's much more about how we behave and how we apply the knowledge, uh, not only our technical knowledge, but also our behavioural finance knowledge in order to support clients along their financial planning journey. So let's hear about what Dante has to say. So Dante, there are new standards that have been released by the FPSB for the um, the Financial Planner Competency Profile. Um, and one of the major additions to that has been the, the inclusion of more elements of kind of behavioural finance and the psychology of money. Can you tell us a little bit about what's being added to the uh, standards, please? Yes, thank you, Jackie. So we, we've embarked on um, some work in respect to looking at our global standards in terms of the standards for financial planning, which will be published um, uh, in April this year. Um, we're also been looking at, uh, in particular, the um, the the areas of change, if you like, in terms of um, areas of training um, uh, and where we feel the uh, the gaps are, or, or areas in which we could better develop financial planning in respect to training and assistance of, of consumers um, and, and their clients. And one of those areas that has come up um, and I think is, 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 is being really talked about around the world is this issue or area or aspect of psychology of financial planning. And so this has probably been one of the, the main changes in respect to um, the work that we're doing and uh, and will feature as part of the standards that will come out. Um, and it's been asked for uh, quite a bit in terms of uh, from the CFP professional community in terms of an area of focus. Also, it's been identified by many regulators around the world in terms of uh, a need to ensure that licensing. Uh, so when people are licensed to provide advice, that in those in those uh, licensing training standards, there are uh, you know uh, psychology of financial planning or behavioural science, which also uh, is uh, is also termed, is incorporated into uh, into that training as well. So, um, so that's been a key area of focus for us. That's one of the main areas of change in respect to our competency profile and standards um, that uh, that will be featured um, this year by FPSB, um, and we're quite excited by it. And we know there's a lot of demand and interest. Yeah, and I think that it's something that I must quite a lot about actually and you know one of the roles of being going through the certification process um like we said on our previous podcast together was that you know you you change as a financial planner as you go through that process and that gives you um you know that kind of foresight to be able to see what's coming you know down the track towards a client so that you can it gives you the opportunity to ask those extra questions but and i guess this actually also leads nicely on to from the vulnerability uh, uh, you know in, in criteria and things that the regulator has been looking at around the world for what must be more than five years now about how as financial planners and advisors we identify whether a client is vulnerable um, and you know that it kind of fits nicely together it's kind of a natural progression on from that isn't it I think we as a profession one thing I've noticed up until now, is that we all have our own definition of what the psychology of money looks like and what behavioural finance should look like. And, you know, you can use it as a good tool or or as a manipulative tool, I guess, can't you? Because you can kind of get under the skin of a client and make them do what you want them to do, potentially. So I think there is that the, the ethics overlay that goes with being a CFP professional, which is really important to, do, to understand and deal with that psychology of many issue. So what, what will happen now once the, this ex, these extra standards have, have been released into uh, the competency profile? Um, 
what happens next? You said that the, that you're going to start looking at the you know the education and how does how will that come out in practice for CFPs around the world? Yes, yeah, so, so so there's so there are there are two parts. So one is. Um, one is we the, the standards that will be released in uh, in April will in um, which will commence in one April. Um, there will be a couple of years of transition uh, for for all of our affiliates to be to then take those standards and to implement in their respective territories and also to to discuss and and work with the education providers to ensure that the curriculum and content um, and the on the education content etc that that. Uh, you know, uh, prospective candidates for CFP certification will undertake is uh, is is updated, um, and so 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 first part is working with um, is working with education providers to update on what that what those standards will be, and and in particular the psychology of financial planning or behavioural finance and how that's going to be incorporated uh, into those programs. And so there'll be a period of time for that adjustment, but effectively each territory will have that responsibility in terms of implementing it, um, into, in, into their respective programs. Um, and so that's, that's, uh, that's important. Secondly, um, or we are looking, uh, this year at, uh, at, at trying to uh, create some global content that then can be used um, uh, for, um, uh, for for those territories that that need the content uh, and also um, for existing CFP professionals of course we want to try uh, and and upskill them in respect to uh, this topic of psychology of financial planning and as you know you know one of the you know one of the main uh, levers that we have in terms of uh, in terms of upskilling or training on new topics is through continuing professional development or um, uh, CPD as we call it um, in terms of uh, delivering those and so um, you know we're encouraging uh, many of the territories to also look at programs like that uh, in which uh, you know existing C professionals can be upskilled. Um, so effectively, it's a combination of looking at the programs for future candidates of CFP professionals and then upskilling existing CFP professionals as well uh in terms of uh in terms of this topic area um what's interesting is that I know some jurisdictions um you know have 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 moved ahead in terms of requiring um you know behavioral science uh, behavioral economics or psychology of financial planning um uh in respect to uh local licensing requirements and requiring people to uh to undertake studies already for the purposes of maintaining their license so you know there's a combination of i think us needing to you know um uh, proactively uh get ahead of this in terms of getting those uh those training uh, and learnings out there, and, but um, but you know m- many many territories, many regulators uh, have already identified this as a key area of of training for uh, that financial planners need to have. Yeah, well, it's fascinating stuff, and, and I think having some clear structure of the the sorts of components that the education providers will and you know who who the organisations assessing the certified financial planner programs across the different territories. I think it's really important that you're giving them that kind of structure so they know kind of broadly what kind of areas to look at because I think you know like with vulnerable clients it it can mean a lot of things to different people can't it Um, and behavioral finance is such a huge area that actually honing it down and saying you know these are the specific areas that we think are you know the most pertinent that we should be discussing as certified financial planner professionals you know is really important aspect. It, it, it is, and and this and and, and you you raise a really good point. And you know, um, if you think about it, um, you know, this is an opportunity for uh, formal training um, for um, financial planners as professionals to understand um, understand how consumers behave um, and how they are are different, and perhaps what some of those triggers are. Um, it is it is um, you know, it's more than just you know, understanding how a client might behave if the market drops, right? I mean, it's yeah. it's a lot more sophisticated than that. Um, and it also is about, you know, it's one of the things that, you know, um, uh, there's an area of, of focus that I had in particular for a long time was, um, and, and a discussion in Australia was the fact that sometimes you have this unconscious bias. Um, you actually sometimes don't know that you have a bias. Um, and so part of this is also better understanding 
for financial planners to understand that that some of their own biases may be influencing you know their 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 own clients um and so it's not saying that you know that's necessarily you know that, that, that there's anything wrong or bad but if you're not aware of it then you don't know how you're actually influencing your clients in in a in a way that actually your clients may not you know may may not be uh, appropriate or in their interest and so this this you know this psychology of financial planning is really about as much as understanding how consumers may behave as much as, as much as about is, is about those consumers is about understanding yourself um and and how you operate and how um your processes and your own uh your own training and environment that you're working how does that impact on your own um recommendations and the influence you have on your clients and so it's that awareness piece if you're aware of those things then you can then address them or you can ensure you put in processes to ensure that those biases aren't going to potentially negatively impact you know the advice you give or or, or, or the position of those clients so it, it it's fascinating it really is interesting um i think you know for many financial planners, I've heard comments about, you know, I know my clients well, you know, you know, you think about existing uh, CFP professionals who have had clients for 20 years. I mean, they, they will say they know everything about that client. Um, and that's true. They, they've, they've learned that they've learned so much about that client, but what we're talking about here is professional training and understanding, you know, that psychology that takes place both on your end and your client's end. And, um, you know, and, and, that professional training is really important because that's how we learn and that's how then you can be better informed in your approach going forward. Yeah, thank you, Dante. I look forward to seeing how they are implemented in each of the countries as the months go by. Thanks for joining me today. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Jackie. If you'd like to find out more, then you can go to the FPSB website and look at more detail on the financial planner competency profiles. I will also put links in the show notes to all of that information as well, so you can find it easily. It's really interesting, isn't it, to listen to different people who have different experiences of gaining their certified financial planner certification or maybe developing the financial planning profession at large. If you know anybody who you think might be interested in listening to any of these podcasts, then please do pass on our details. That's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. See you again soon. Bye for now.